welcome to the fourth lecture on this series on uh, dielectrics so we are moving further with uh, some concept called as ferroelectricity and uh, ferroelectric materials are actually those which have already spontaneous polarization that means the polarization is already existing with them it is in within them even inherently so what is going to happen is when there is an absence of electric field the centers of the gravity of the positive and negative charge do not co coincide so that means they always have a dipole moment the positive and negative charges are separated and they have a resultant dipole moment this is what is going to result in spontaneous polarization and we call this phenomena as ferroelectricity and the materials exhibiting this phenomena are ferroelectrics so let's see some examples so this was first discovered in rochelle salt which has polarization over a temperature range of minus 18 degree to 22 degree celsius we have other examples barium titanate potassium phosphate potassium niobate let's see into some important characteristics here so just now we said one important characteristic that is spontaneous polarization so because of that it will get very high values of permittivity or the dielectric constant will be very high so it ranges from 1000 to 10000s and another point is it is dependent on temperature the dielectric constant is dependent on temperature it's given by this curie weiss law that is dielectric constant epsilon or epsilon r is a constant divided by t minus tc for any temperature t more than tc this tc is known as curie temperature so dielectric constant is inversely proportional to temperature and that dependency is any temperature t minus the curie temperature of that material and the constant over here is called as curie constant and we just talked that it also has spontaneous polarization and it occurs within a definite temperature range like uh, we talked about the rochelle salt example and you can see that polarization occurs only up to the curie temperature what happens when temperature becomes equal to curie temperature we can see that t minus tc will become zero or dielectric constant becomes infinite so polarization is inversely proportional to temperature and goes to the curie temperature so there is a session which i have written section on uh, polarization catastrophe you can just ignore that so that basically on how the material behaves uh, when spontaneous polarization occurs but what is important next is the hysteresis characteristics of the ferroelectric materials so you have already studied hysteresis in the case of uh, magnetic materials this is something similar but here we are going to consider applied electric field and the resultant polarization so y axis of this curve if if i consider the graph it is between polarization and electric field y axis is polarization and x axis is electric field here o is the origin so when we apply the electric field initially the polarization increases through this path and reaches a maximum value over here this maximum value of polarization is denoted as ps and you call it as saturation polarization that's the maximum value of polarization the material can obtain when you apply the electric field so once it has obtained the maximum polarization what we are going to do next is we are trying to reduce the electric field and see if the polarization becomes zero so if i reduce the electric field the polarization reduces but it doesn't become zero but 
it reduces and comes to the polarization reduces and comes to a value a particular value called as residual polarization or remnant polarization denoted by pr residual or remnant polarization leftover polarization so the polarization has still not come to zero when you even brought the electric field to zero so what we are going to do next is we are going to forcefully bring the polarization to zero so in order to do that you need to apply an electric field you need to apply an additional electric field this you call as coercive field coercive field so when you apply the coercive field polarization drops down to zero and it continues the path in the other direction once again you are increasing the electric field polarization becomes maximum you try to reduce the electric field to zero polarization doesn't reduce to zero it leaves the remnant polarization and then you again try to bring it to zero forcefully by giving the coercive field in the other direction and later it traces back to this maximum polarization so this is the hysteresis curve for ferroelectric materials so you can just go through this i have mentioned for each path how it goes and how it achieves the maximum polarization and how we bring it back so the total area in covered by this hysteresis curve is going to give the dielectric loss how much field has been lost so that is being given or how much energy has been lost is being given by the total area under this curve so the main properties of ferroelectric materials are spontaneous polarization high value of dielectric constant temperature dependency which is given by the curie weiss law and the hysteresis characteristic next we move into the different applications of dielectric materials so the basic application which we have been discussing all the while are capacitors so for an example we have mentioned that this particular capacitor barium titanium oxide has very high dielectric constant of around 15000 and next uh we before we proceed further in the case of applications so we just studied about ferro electricity now there are two more phenomena called as piezo electricity and pyro electricity so piezo electricity is when polarization occurs due to mechanical changes and pyro electricity is due to change in heat or increase in heat or change in temperature whenever you heat up the material if polarization occurs then you call it as pyro electricity pyro so next we are going to see some application based on piezo electricity so first is generation of ultrasonic waves but if we use piezo electric materials piezo electric crystals it can give rise to ultrasonic waves next we have vibrators where you apply an ac voltage a particular voltage or piezo electric material it will vibrate and resonate at that particular frequency so this is one simple example which you have been uh, which everybody uses on a daily basis that's a speaker or a headphone does almost become like a part of our life so next we have piezo electric ceramics used for detection of sound in water now coming to pyroelectric detectors so these are a few examples of heat sensors so we just said that pyroelectric is when there is a change of heat and polarization occurs so basically this is used for uh, producing uh, or making use for uh, thin film uh, development or thin film uh, detection sensors thin film sensors so you have uh, a few examples here uh, crystals of triglycine sulfate and then uh, pzt lead zinc and uh, titanium so these are piezo uh, pyroelectric sensors 
next another one is gas igniter so for gas igniter these are the uh, which this is something which we already know we either use it at kitchen or somebody uses for smoking so what happens is there is a piezoelectric material and when you give a mechanical stress then there is a high voltage being generated or polarization occurs and it produces spark so this is an example for piezoelectric or piezoelectricity further examples for piezoelectricity are accelerometers transformers dot matrix printer head now let's see one important application of ferroelectricity or ferroelectric materials so that's ferroelectric memories or also called as ferroelectric ramps f ramps so because ferroelectricity means spontaneous polarization that is going to help a lot when we use it as a ramp so ferroelectric ramps you can see that the data will be stored due to the localized polarization or the spontaneous polarization in the material so usual memories which we use this s ramp and the d ramp they all are volatile that means you will lose the data when there is no power and uh, there are a few non volatile ramps like cmos based or eproms based but they are very expensive now f ramps or ferroelectric ramps are non volatile because of the spontaneous polarization and even if you switch off the voltage the data does not is not lost and they are not much affected by radiation and are also used for space applications and medical applications further advantages these f ramps are faster so the writing time is very fast then low power is sufficient just a small amount is sufficient to create that spontaneous polarization and then there is no loss of data when there is no power so that's all with this unit of dielectrics in the next lecture i'll be coming up with some numericals uh, which uh, the students can uh, practice all right thank you so much see you in the next lecture